Welcome to Chemisode. Um, this is on covalent networks and layer lattices. So this is the last part on covalent molecules and we're going to try and explain some of the different types of covalent um, structures. So they're not always covalent molecules. Sometimes we get network lattices and sometimes we get layer lattices. So let's go have a look at these guys. So what we talked about before was covalent molecules. We had um, some of the properties of covalent molecules and we explained them to do with a few things. Um, the mo covalent molecules do not conduct electricity. They have low melting points and boiling points and they require lots of energy to break them into elements. The reason we had these properties is for these points that are going to come up now. No conductivity of electricity is due to no charged particles. Low melting points and boiling points was due to weak intermolecular forces between molecules and having lots of en energy needed to require to break them into elements was due to strong intramolecular forces. So I want to get you guys thinking about these two forces here because what we're going to look at is some interesting covalent um, compounds which actually have very high melting points and it's to do with the different forces holding the um, things together. And we're also going to look at something that um, conducts electricity, a certain covalent molecule that can conduct electricity. So let's go have a look at these guys now. These are known as covalent network lattices or covalent layer lattices. What we're going to deal with is, um, and how we're going to explain this, is using some allotropes of carbon. Carbon up here, as you can see, has four electrons in the outside shell, so it can form four covalent bonds. In diamond, what actually happens is all of those um, electrons form bonds with other carbons. So you get this type of structure here where you have a carbon in the middle forming a bond to another carbon, which can form another 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 bond to another carbon, and so on and so forth. This is known as a covalent network lattice because what you're having is a network of covalent bonds holding this compound together. All four electrons are bonded to other carbons in diamond. What this means is that it's an extremely strong material. It has an extremely high melting point due to all the bonds being covalent. There's no intermolecular bonds in diamond. They are all intra, where you have a bond of one atom forming a bond with another atom. All these bonds here are intramolecular, which are those really strong ones. So if we do end up putting massive amounts of energy into um, diamond, it won't actually melt down, it will actually just disintegrate into the elements of carbon. So what you're doing, if I go back here, is you're breaking these intramolecular bonds when you're breaking carbon. You're not breaking these weak inter, you're breaking these strong intramolecular bonds. So that is what carbon, what diamond looks like. It has carbon, with all covalent bonds to other things. Covalent layer lattices um, look like this. This is graphite. Okay, In graphite, three of the electrons in carbon are bonded to other carbons. So if you're looking at this, we've got a carbon in the middle, we have a bond to another carbon here, and a bond to another carbon here, and a bond to another carbon here. We get sheets of this structure, we get sheets of these this lattice, and our third electron, which has not formed a bond yet, that actually floats in between, like a delocalized electron, similar to what we have in metals. What this means is covalent layer lattices, such as graphite, or graphite in particular, this has the ability con to conduct electricity due to this third, sorry, the fourth electron being delocalized and able to move around. What this also means is um, graphite, is very very slippery due to being these um, layers being able to move alongside each other. We have a relatively strong bond between um, our delocalized electron and our layer, 
but it has the ability to move just like a metal does. So graphite acts in a similar way to uh, metals, if you would imagine that. We have layers of strongly bonded together covalent networks and then in between we have these delocalized electrons. That is covalent network lattices where we have all bonds being covalent, very strong. Covalent layer lattices where we have most of the bonds being covalent and we have some delocalized things here as well. As I said before, these two compounds are both made up of carbon. They both only have carbon in them. What these guys are called are actually called allotropes. They mean there's the same element but a different form of that element. So this is these two are allotropes of carbon. There's a few other allotropes of carbon as well, but I won't go into the details of those. But you need to know about covalent network lattices and covalent layer lattices. The next slide I'm going to go through is um, a question slide. So this is a typical question you might get where you want to try and explain what type of bonding you have. Okay, I'll just need to change this for two seconds as well because this should be SiO2. Okay, it's changed. And so what we're going to look at is um, carbon dioxide. It is a gas at room temperature. It means its boiling point is very, very low. Silicon dioxide is a solid at room temperature and its melting point is very, very, very high. They have a similar structure. They look like they have a similar structure. But we need to think about what type of bonding is causing these properties. What I'll get you to do is just pause the podcast for two seconds, have a think about it, write down what you think you're going to have, write, write down what type of bonding you think is going to happen in here, what type of covalent bonding you think is going to happen in here, and then we'll discuss what we have. All right, you're back. Now, carbon dioxide, a gas at room temperature and a very low boiling point. We know it's a covalent molecule. We know it's a covalent compound because it's only got non-metals in it. Carbon and oxygen, both non-metals. So it has to be covalent. Because it's got a low boiling point, a low melting point, it means that carbon dioxide here must be a covalent molecule because it must have weak intermolecular forces holding it together. In fact, carbon dioxide is a non-polar molecule, so it has dispersion forces holding it together. Silicon dioxide, on the other hand, it has a melting point in excess of 1,600 degrees Celsius. That's a very high melting point. It's a solid at room temperature. So what does this say about this guy here? It's a covalent molecule because we have two non-metals, or we have a metalloid and a non-metal. So it's a covalent molecule. That means that the type of bonding present in silicon dioxide is actually covalent network lattices. Okay? We have covalent network lattices because we have this very, very high melting point. This is due to the strong intramolecular forces holding this compound together. So looking at the boiling point, looking at the melting point, looking at the, um, the state that these molecules are in tells us a bit about what type of bonding we have. So if you have a very low melting point, you've probably got a covalent molecule and intermolecular forces holding it together. If you've got silicon dioxide at a very high melting point, you've probably got a covalent network lattice where you've got intramolecular forces holding the atoms together. That's the last thing on covalent molecules. What I'm going to do is the next podcast I do will be a summary of all three types of bonding we've covered. A summary of um, ionic, metallic, and covalent. Um, so stay tuned to that. Obviously, there's a summary page here of things you need to know about covalent molecules, but I won't bother with that. I'll just wait till I do the whole summary of all three and we can compare them a bit better. So that's all. I hope you've enjoyed these podcasts. If you have, um, let me know how much you have by um, writing a little comment on these videos. Until next time, take it easy and keep on enjoying your chemistry.